When you were arrested on Monday and brought in, were you told why you were under arrest? Absolutely not. No. You had no idea? No. No. Not for 48, maybe 36 to 48 hours later. Pedro, when did you become aware? Well, um, there was a, a, an inmate that didn't speak English, so I translated for her. So then I, I asked her, uh, now that I help you, can you help me? This is to the officer. You yes. Said. And she said, sure. What you want to know? I want to know what, 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 am I, what am I being charged for? So she said, okay, I, I'll go see. So she comes back and she, she, she's got a piece of paper written down whatever I was in for. And because I, I didn't have my, my reading glasses, I looked and I said, oh, open containers. She said, she said no, read it again. And I, I said, oh, kidnapping? What, what's this kidnapping? Where was Ariel? Errol was in the front, towards more toward the front, on suicide watch. Did he ever go past you? Did you ever see him? Or? I did. Because in where he was at, there's no toilet. So across the, uh, from my cell, there, there's, there was one open. So he, could, he came there and used, used it. I seen, then that's when I seen him. And when he came out, he said, peace to me. So evidently that happened with him over there. And when he walked past me, he goes, O'Neill, you're never going to see me again. I love you, bro. And that was it. So when did you become aware of what he did? Well, after, just shortly after that, when uh, the, the detective took me into the room and, and uh, I started asking me questions and showing me pictures of the girls. And when he showed me the pictures of the girls, asked me, uh, do you know these girls he showed me first? So I can't tell you which, I can't even tell you which one he showed me first, but he says, do you, have you ever seen this girl? And I said, no, I've never seen that girl. And then he showed me the other one, have you ever seen this girl? I said, no, I have never seen that girl. And uh, he says, that's Gina De Jesus and Amanda Berry. And my heart felt, I just dropped, not physically, but I just, I just, I just hit the ground. And after he said, that's Amanda Berry, and they were in your brother's house. You had been to the house. You would yeah. go to the house. Yes. I mean, how often? No, no, uh, not how often. I, I, don't, I didn't go to his house very much. But when I did, he would let me in, you know, past the kitchen. Could you see anything beyond the kitchen? No. Because there's curtains. Do you have the house blocked off with curtains. Mm -hmm. And what about, could you hear anything in the home? No, the radio was playing all, all the time. He would, or, play, he would play music all the time? Yeah. If not the radio, the TV. Something had to be on at all time in the kitchen. So, so I couldn't hear nothing else but the radio or the TV. Did you in any way know, help, assist your brother in the horrible things he's accused of doing? Absolutely not. No idea that this horrific crime was going on. Pedro? No. You know there are people who will say you had to know. How is it possible for so long in that home, your brother, you couldn't no. For those people out there, I'm going to tell you something. I had nothing to do with this, and I don't know how, how it, my brother got away with it for so, so many years, because that would never cross my mind. He fooled you. He, he, he fooled me. Do you worry now that people will always suspect that you actually did have a role? Absolutely. Yes. And the people out there that know me, they know that O'Neill Castro is not that person, has nothing to do with that. Same. I, I, I couldn't never think of doing anything like that. What is your brother to you now? Monster, hateful, I hope he rots in that jail.
I don't even want them to take his life like that. I want him to suffer in that jail to the last extent. I don't care if you even feed him, what he has done to my life and my family's. I feel the same way. To the both of you now, he no longer exists. He is, right. Yeah. He is gone. He's a goner. Almost He's, as if he were dead. Yeah. The monster's a goner. If you could talk to Gina, if you could talk to Michelle, if you could talk to Amanda, and in a way you are, I guess, what would you say? I, I, would, I, would, tell her, I would tell them that I'm sorry that you had to go through this, that uh, I, was, I was thinking about these girls being uh, you, missing and... I, I'm just grateful that they're home and, and, you know, out of that horrible house. And and I just, I just tell them that I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for my, for what Ariel done. Cause see, I, not, not much. It's, it's uh, Felix. I know him for a long time, and and when I find out that, that. Ariel had Gina. I just, I just broke, I just broke down. Cause it's shocking. Ariel, we know this guy for a long time, Felix. And this you is, got his, this is Gina's father. Yeah, Felix, know. Felix, mm -hmm. the yes. And you got his daughter, and they, and, and you go, you go around like if nothing. You, you even uh, went to the vigils. You, you had posters. You give his mama a hug, and you got his daughter captive. O'Neill, the same thing. I mean, if you absolutely could. same thing. I just want the also the families to uh, get the one uh, justice for the full extent to the fullest extent. This has torn my heart apart. This this has killed me. I am a walking corpse right now. Why are you talking to me? I want the world to know that. O'Neill and Pedro, me, Pedro, had nothing to do with death. It was a shock to me to learn that my brother Ariel was doing this. Well, I want to thank you both for talking to us and for sharing with us and, and opening up to us. Thank, thank you. you and, thank uh, you, and I hope the world yeah. listened to us and... We want to get. We want it back to normal. You already got your your monster. Please give us our freedom.